Yo, alright, hey guys, so my name's Luca, I'm an entrepreneur, I started my first business when I was 19, I was more to pop crawl, for the past 5 years I've been a tour operator, just as Covid came around, everything came crashing down, so that's when I decided it's time to reinvent myself, in 2021 I'll be launching a number of startups, and in preparation for that, I'm meeting up with Malta's most talented entrepreneurs and I'm going to learn about all their life story, especially their fuck-ups. I hope to be able to learn from all of their mistakes. Today we're meeting somebody very interesting, very energetic man, Marvin Gauci. He's the owner of six restaurants, four in Malta, two in Budapest. I'm really looking forward to learning all about his life story. Let's go. <laughs> Hey, hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Fuck Ups and Success, the web series where we meet up with different entrepreneurs, business owners, we talk to them about their entire life story, what motivates them, what kind of challenges they face, and how they overcome any obstacles they face in their day-to-day -day, their day -to -day life. Today, we're meeting a very energetic man, Marvin Gauci. Um, uh, pleasure to have you here to, with us today. How are you doing? It's my pleasure too, my friend, and I'm doing great, thank you. And when I say energetic, I truly mean it. Um, you arrived here today, you know, we're in a music studio, and there's a lot of um, instruments around, and we had a little bit of fun playing around with, with some of the with drums. Some drums. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But listen, you're as, as, as energetic as I am. I eh? really don't, uh, don't underestimate yourself. <laughs> yeah, I was really looking forward. Like, I, I do feel like we're, we're, we're on the same level when it comes to that. And it's, it's, it's nice, to, nice to chat with someone who has that same positive energy all the time. Um, uh, I felt the same way when I met you, man. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. You, have you ever had an interest in music or? I love music. Um, the only thing that I can't do is play. So I need to start learning. I'm 41 years old and uh, this is going to start very soon. That's interesting. That's interesting. Do you, have you ever sang? Do you ever sing? Or no, no, no. I, only in the shower. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, we had a little joke earlier that maybe we need to set up a shower in the yeah, studio. Yeah. And, and film it, you know? <laughs> and film it. Yeah, that would be great. That would be... But I need be... to work out a little bit more in the gym, you know what I mean? Or else it won't be any interesting, is you know? Fit is fitness <laughs> an important part of your routine? Um, lately, yes. I mean, I've, uh, I've, been, uh, I've been working since I was 13 years old. I've never had any, any chance to, to, to look after my, myself and... Uh, and uh, and uh, go to the gym or go running or do an exercise. But lately, um, the last year, I've, uh, I've really changed uh, the, perception, the perception. And I'm doing gym almost every day. Um, uh, I'm, eating, uh, I'm eating more healthy, you know. I mean, um, uh, if I just eat in, in the restaurants, it will be great, you know. But normally when I'm passing by, I stop and, uh, at the side of the, of the street and buy some beautiful pastizzi or eftira, bizate or this or that, you know. I, I mean, I'm so used to cuisines, uh, I mean, my type of food, like fine dining and all that, that I crave junk food, you know what I mean? So <laughs> that's what I, I love uh, street food as well. So uh, I love food too. Yeah, we'll get to food in a second, but have you felt any difference uh, since you've been uh, getting into more exercise? Like, does it change your, you know, your focus? Or? So basically, uh, my tolerance in, uh, uh, was, uh, was, was okay, you know? 
um, then through COVID and and through all the the pandemic and you know business going up, going down, we're closing, lockdown, not lockdown, and now care view and this and that and the other. Um, uh, my tolerance was disappearing a little bit, you know. So when I found out that, like, I, I feel it that uh, since I started the gym, like one week later, uh, I'm, I've become more aware and more um, uh, understanding and, uh, you know, my fuse is not so quickly. Okay, so you were you know? tolerance, you mean like temper-wise, it's yes. you, yeah. more and more, more yeah. mellow. Okay. okay. I mean, when I was younger, I had a terrible temper, you know, I mean, younger, uh, younger. Oh, I mean, when I was working in, in the kitchen, only in the kitchen and you're seeing, um, I mean, one of the most stressful jobs in the world is being a chef, you know, <laughs> in a busy restaurant when you have your, your, your printer and it's going ching, 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 and the orders are coming in, man, chum, 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 and you start, you know what I mean? And that's the adrenaline that it gives you when you have that adrenaline then you, you're only focused on that. And if someone does something wrong or oh, God help them, you know? <laughs> so that's, that's when you become a professional. You become a professional in the industry, obviously you become a chef and there's that, there's that kind of environment. But uh, your, your passion for, for food started earlier than that. Of course, oh, of course. I mean, uh, I remember when I was uh, very, very young, um, uh, my mother, when she cooked, um, uh, the first person that she looks at the table when, when we're tasting the food was myself because she knew how much I loved it. I was always, I always had the interest in it. My mom is a great home cook. And, uh, and uh, I'm actually writing a book w- with, uh, with her recipes, with her, you know what I mean? It's, uh, um, apart from that, my grandfather used to be a very, very good baker from Ormi. He had St. Anthony's uh, a bakery in Mdina Road, Ormi. And... Um, you know, so so my grandmother as well was an amazing, uh, amazing chef. She used to cook uh, for for expatriates in Malta at the at, at the time when the the British were here. So so the the it comes from there. You know what I mean? So at the at the family table, when your mother would uh, look to you, what what should would she ask you? No, she's all the time. The first uh, when when I'm taking the first bite, uh, you could and everybody will notice her. You know that she would look at my face to see at my reaction. I mean the um, I always uh, you know I mean she she's a beautiful cook. You know what I mean and uh, and the flavors that uh, that she manages to, to 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 take out. I mean she had no studies. She has no education in 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 food and culinary. Um, but she's uh, she does a lot of um, sun dried tomatoes. She does a lot of um, uh, capers and brine olives. Um, we have a huge garden where my father looks after the the herbs, and uh, we have chickens, and we have our own rucola and our own different uh, veg- vegetables and supplies. You know, so they're they're quite uh, still uh, intact with uh, with nature and also with uh, creating um their own produce you know what i mean and their own supply you know my brother is um uh, is a uh, i don't know if you know him his name is uh, Pepe gauchi he had the uh, bahria oasis oh yes he is a surfer as well yes, actually he's, know, he's a great i know surfer, him from the yes. water <laughs> and now he's yeah. in portugal he's uh, repl- 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 Replicating what he did over here, um, I think um, uh, he's uh, he's been growing uh, microgreens for I don't know how many how many how many years now. He supplied my restaurants with the microgreens and with f- uh, uh, flowers, uh, edible flowers, and and uh, wild f- foraging. You know what I mean? Yeah, it takes a really really good sustainable. Um, approach to to uh, and and even a, a mindset approach to I think he has a, he has quite a quite a mindset let's put it that way as yeah. well yeah so uh, wh- where did you actually start your career when did it move from uh, something you you enjoyed something you're passionate about to something you you actually want to make a living out of well um, when I was 13 years old I started working in a hotel and um, uh, and the chef. Uh, um, kind of did somebody a favor for me to go into the kitchen, you know, because uh, my first job was cutting meat, uh, hams and cheeses in a in a deli, you know, and uh, and the guy the guy that uh, that I I worked with, um, he he paid me with fuel because I had a little moped and he used to fill it up for me and I used to run around the uh, Meliha with it, you know what I mean at the time. Ooh. 
And uh, he, uh, he told me, now we close in September. I said, then what am I going to do? He said, don't worry, I have a friend of mine who's the head chef of this hotel. You know, he said, um, you should, uh, you, you, we go together and, and we speak to him. And I went and at first, obviously, when he saw a little 13-year-old kid, he started scratching his head, you know, until I did the first shift. And then he, he understood the, the, the passion I had and not only the passion, but the drive. You know, and he he liked me, and I started working there, and then I did a couple of years there, and then I moved to somewhere else, and then I moved to somewhere else, and six months there, six months there. But when I was in the hotel, I went into all the different restaurants. So like, I mean, I did breakfast, I did dinner, I did lunch, I did the Lido, I did the, there was another uh, kitchen, I did the pool area kitchen. So I was in different uh, sections. Of, uh, so did of, you ever actually have any formal training as a chef? And then that's what happened. And then uh, when I was uh, 16, um, because obviously I was still in school, so I, I, I used to arrive in the hotel at 5 o'clock in the morning, start preparing at 7 o'clock, the bus picks me up from there, you know, and then drops me up there again and continue, continue there, you know. Um, and then what happened, uh, the, the general manager of the hotel, I remember, he's a great guy, he said, Marvin, you're doing so well and uh, would like to you to go to the Institute of Tourism Studies and and this and uh, you know I said yeah, yeah sure you know and then they 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 sorted it out and I went <laughs> for my first day and when I went for my first day it was like super boring for me you know so I was like okay this is something that I learned like five years ago. You know what I mean? Or t- you know, I, so, so I, is it actually important to go to, to, to formal training? You know, or? actually, actually, if you already know what they're going to teach you, it's not important. But if you don't know what they're going to teach you, then it is important. But then you're also an employer now. So when you're employing people, do you, do you look at qualifications? Do you look at experience? Do you f- no, I only look at attitude. That's the only thing I look at people: their attitude. If they have a, a, a good attitude. I can teach them anything I want, you know what I mean? And they can learn anything I teach them because they have the right attitude, you know? So that's what I look for. I mean, lately, lately, um, uh, I've hired uh, some very, very, very interesting and clever people in the industry, whereby I would say that now is the right time for me to do that, you know? Because... I cannot continue working 20 hours a day, you know what I mean? So I have good people that can handle uh, a day a day or a week's work, you know, without me have to worry about everything, you know? So obviously you've had this drive from a young age. Uh, you also seem to have the environment of, of family also interested in... in, in, in yeah, I'm the in only food. one actually that... Uh, I'm the only one that uh, ended up working in the kitchen from the whole family, cousins and so on, you know. My cousin started, my David, who's uh, he's, he's Canadian, but he lives in Malta now. He actually came to Malta because I offered him a job and then he loved it and he stayed, you know. So was there anyone who uh, was uh, well, maybe not influenced you but inspired you uh, when it comes to international chefs or local local chefs? You know what? Everyone inspires me and, every, uh, and every, I look up to everyone, you know, and then uh, any sort of talent, especially in the kitchen, I am uh, um, um, odd, you know. So it's like when someone creates something, um, you uh, and obviously I understand what what goes into the thing that uh, that they that they create, or I cannot understand it because I don't know how to do it. I'm just like wow, you know. And then I always call them and say, listen, I'm really interested in your in your thing. Can you show me how to do it or explain to me a little bit about it? So is it is it a hunger for knowledge for for? Of course, oh, of course. Of course, absolutely. I mean, if if I start talking uh, about Maltese chefs, there's like 20 Maltese chefs that uh, I would call and I would say, listen, um, uh, how do you do that? I Last time I saw it on your menu, I saw it and I, uh, c- can you tell me the recipe so I don't have to try and, you know, I will eventually manage, but it will take me a couple of weeks, you know, and if you just give me a recipe, it will be easier for me. Obviously, I'm not going to copy exactly what he did. I would I would put my own twist in it, you know. But uh, there's a lot of chefs that uh, that work in different restaurants and hotels and in in, uh, in Malta and and also abroad, and they help me with recipes and they explain. And because I didn't stay in school, I made a couple of weeks there and then. 
I just um, I just uh, left. So are recipes uh, not something that should be protected? Uh, is it something that uh, is kind you of know, open source? You, you know what? Um, I find myself that uh, if I keep it an open source for everyone, you can come to my kitchen anytime you want. You just tell me, I inform the chefs, I say, we have a, a, a person that's going to shadow you for a day or for two days or for a week. You can see anything, everything is available for everyone, you know? Because if I don't do that, then I don't want, in my mind, I don't want to create something else because you know what I mean? So once you share something, then you need to always look for that something that it's not there. So you need to create it. You know what I mean? But if something is created and you keep it for yourself, then you, you kind of become kind of lazy and you don't want to create something else. That's why I like sharing my recipes. You know, yeah, you're constantly innovating and of course, of and course. letting other people take take what you created also. But that's, that's but nowadays, nowadays I have uh, I have a team of chefs that uh, that they even create their own their own dishes. And obviously, if they're gonna serve them in my restaurants, um, I need to approve them, change a little bit if there is the need. Um, if there's no need, I mean, I say you know, chapeau. You know, you did it. You started, of course, uh, working for other people. Eventually, you did open your first restaurant. Uh, would you like to tell us a story about that? Yeah, sure. When I was 19 years old, I was in Ireland, um, almost 20 years old anyway. And uh, we were having a, uh, our first child, myself and my wife. And, uh, and, we, and I, opened, uh, I went into a partnership with someone that had the catering of a golf club. In so, Ireland. In Ireland, okay. yeah. So that's that's my first kind of venture, kind of, you know. And then uh, when I came to Malta, I think I was like 21 or something like this, and I opened Wild Time uh, Restaurant. I took it over from, from someone else, and uh, my partner owned the building at the time. And uh, I went into partnership with him, and I was there for like four and a half years, five years. And then I opened uh, uh, Tarragon. Then after Tarragon, after seven years of Tarragon, I uh, I was approached by by the CEO of the Corentia Group, and he said uh, we have a rest we would like to give you a restaurant in our in our complex. You know, uh, we'd like to start uh, building a relationship with you because uh, we we want to see whether we can work together. So obviously it took us a, a while because uh, I was quite comfortable with Tarragon. You know what I mean? I was. <laughs> You know, one restaurant, yeah. you know what I mean? I was really raising busy. a... Yeah, and yeah. I was raising a family as well. I have four children, so... So you, you went through a, a restaurant in Ireland, Wild Time, and then Tarragon. From the first two experiences, was there anything you learned that eventually led to um, creating Tarragon, which is quite a, quite a success? I mean, of course. Um, when I was in, in, in the first restaurant, I was on TV every, almost every day. I mean, the first time I went on TV, my, my, my mom had to drop me on TV uh, to the studios because uh, I, I was under 18 and I didn't drive, you know. So my mom used to take me there, you know. Um, um, for sure that, uh, that there was a lot of, uh, a lot of sacrifices because uh, in, in wild, when I had the, the Wild Time restaurant at the very beginning, um, I used to be on TV almost every day. And uh, the people see you cook, they like what you do, and they come to the restaurant. And that was the success, you know what I mean? So you, you learned a bit about publicity in of that sense? No, not really, because it was all natural. You know what I mean? So I went there, I cooked, people liked it, people liked my energy, people liked my... Well, some people do, some people don't, like, like, like everything. everything. But uh, those who did like it, they came to the restaurant. It was really, really busy. I mean, uh, it was... Uh, there were there in weekends you're always completely full and you're refusing people you know and you always try to fit another table somewhere else you know and then we opened the terrace to make it bigger so it's like it was really hitting you know of course you you went from from uh, from one to two to three then eventually four or is it in Malta in Malta in Malta I have five five yeah and I have two in uh, in Budapest right 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 no, right now operating I only have four. Okay. okay, so I have Tarragon, dinner in the um, caviar and bull, Susurrus, and Don Royale, the Italian, the, the new one. Does it get easier each time? Does it, it, is it there the same challenges? Like, There's always the same challenges. What kind of challenges? 
human resources. <laughs> the right people. <laughs> Is it the right people? Human resources. Um, that's the and the and also I mean it's it's not easy. You know what I mean? Especially we we just opened Don Real like four months ago during a pandemic. You know what I mean? So it's like. Because you you had some opportunities in Hungary. Um, when was the first time you visited Hungary, and what was your impression, and how, like how did that that come about? So I tell you what. Um, so at the time I had Budaman, yeah, and I had uh, Caviar and Bull with Corinthian, yeah. And then they said to me, "Listen, Marvin, uh, uh, you need a holiday." And the CEO told me, "You need a holiday. You need to go to to Budapest. You need a holiday." The same thing that he did to me when he approached me the first time. He said. You know, we opened a hotel in London. Let me invite you over there and see what we're trying to do over here. When I went there, I was gobsmacked, you know. It's like, it's another level, you know, the hotel in, in London. It's uh, breath, breathtaking, you know. It's beautiful, beautiful location, beautiful restaurants, you know. Beautiful people around it, you know. So it's it's that's that's how the initial... Um, uh, the initial kind of, um, not communication, but the initial friendship started when uh, when uh, the CEO of the Corinthia, he invited me over to London to have a look at what they have. And he said, I want to give you a restaurant in Malta that uh, I want I wanted this level, I want... Uh, and he said, uh, you know, this is, this is, this is, this is it, you know? And then they came, uh, they had a restaurant called 3301, and he said, I think that this restaurant, you will make a hit in it. So then I opened Caviar and Bull and it went, it went immediately viral. You know, it was so busy every day. And, uh, and then after, after one year, we opened, I opened Budaman. It took us one month to, to prepare the whole restaurant and we opened, you know, one, one, one month, few days. And, uh, and then after I opened uh, Budapest, um, uh, sorry, uh, after I opened Budaman uh, the next year, um, uh, Simon now they told me, go, go to Budapest uh, and, and have a weekend break over there, you know. So I went to Budapest and uh, the first thing I did when I arrived to the hotel, I found the manager there said, listen, um, Mr. Naudi wanted me to, to show you this, uh, this restaurant. What do you think about it, you know? He showed it to me. And I said, yeah, it's on the boulevard. It's amazing, you know. I said, I said, I don't know. And what can you do over here? I wasn't thinking that he, that he's offering me this restaurant, you know. And uh, on the phone, when I started giving him like uh, uh, maybe an Italian or this, he said, I think I know what should be there. I said, what do you think uh, should be there? Like if you know, why why are you asking me to tell you? He said, I think you should. We should have caviar and bull there, you know. I remember when, when I told my wife, <laughs> she started going, going crazy, you know, because can you imagine I had tarragon and then caviar and bull and then Budaman, then dinner in the sky and now we're opening Budapest, which was, you know. Was it maybe a bit more daunting because it's, it's obviously across a border, you know, it's, you're not. Well, you know what, um, I really didn't think about it, that it's somewhere else, you know. I just I took the challenge and uh, and I just ran with it, you know. Should more people maybe think that way, like not not think within the boundaries of our depending, small island? Depending on the structure you have, if you have a structure where you can act- actually leave the restaurant and continue operating good, then yeah, you know, you should open up. You mentioned your wife a few times. Uh, where did you meet her and uh, what, what does she mean to you, I guess? Uh, she's the world to me. She means the world to me. She's, um, uh, she's a beautiful woman, um, a beautiful mother and a beautiful friend. And uh, I think that uh, I am luckier more than she is. <laughs> no, I'm sure she's, she's, a, she's a lucky woman too. <laughs> I, I met her in, uh, in, in Malta um, yeah. uh, when I was like 15, 16 years old, when I was very, very young. And uh, she's the love of my life. That's great. That's great. The last year has been quite a challenging one, especially for restaurants, hotels. Oh, my God. I think I, um, I thought of uh, blowing everything up and <laughs> just 
crashing everything and let go of everything. I don't know how many times, you know, but I have a great team with me that uh, supported me and that uh, put me in the right direction when I wasn't going to the right direction, you know what I mean? So I'm really, I'm really glad about that. But, uh, has it changed um, uh, any of your plans for the future? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, right now I'm just consolidating what, we, what I have. Um, uh, I am uh, recreating a lot of uh, different, uh, different menus. Um, I'm looking more to, to improve uh, quality, no, not as such quality, but uh, experience so because the quality was always there you know but uh, we need to give something else you know and i think that uh, we're able to give a beautiful experience not just uh, a restaurant you know you think that uh, that has a, a big factor in, in changing walter's perception as a three four star destination to to a five well we already have a five star destination we um and i mean uh, i'm the ambassador of gastronomy for malta i managed to bring michelin over here to malta to um i was the one that reached them and uh, they accepted the they accepted the presentation and uh, obviously um they came they came to Malta and uh, we already have uh, three three star michelin restaurants over here you know which is fantastic you know and this is what uh, this is this is this is another level you know so when you have um, when you have a country that uh, is recognized by michelin and is 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 going there with its uh, uh what do you call them not judges uh, the the guys that do the reviews help me here yeah the inspectors would they inspectors be? Yeah, okay. that's the that's the word that's the word so 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 p so uh, so restaurateurs they have it in, in in them that there's somebody every year inspecting their restaurant you know what i mean it's, it's anonymous right i think they of do it of course right? you you, know, you don't know you don't know you don't know and uh, i mean i think that's uh, that, that keeps them more on the ball, motivated, wanting to improve, you know what I mean? And I believe that since uh, Michelin came, came to Malta, which was my prediction, that the gastronomy and the culinary um, uh, sector in Malta will, will shoot up, and that's what happened. In terms of quality and experience. Of course. And, of course. and talent. And also, you have to put it in, 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 in perspective, right? So you have, if you're a lawyer, you get a degree. Yeah, if you're a server, you get uh, you get a certificate from the Institute of Tourism Studies. Yeah, but when they go when 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 they go to work, if if it's not glorified, they're not going to give their utmost. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if you surround them with a team of passionate and loving uh, for the industry, then they're going to to flourish even more, and then they feel glorified. You know what I mean? Give something to aim for, kind of. I, I, you understand I, my yeah. you understand my point. For example, now um, I was talking to my COO and he was telling me, Jesus, uh, the staff are all looking forward for this change of menu and this and that, and they're asking every day, and when are we going to taste it, and how we're going to when are we going to start it? So it was like uh, I didn't uh, expect it that way, you know. And then all of a sudden. We said, okay, we're going to start changing the menu. In a week, we change it all. We change two dishes every day. So we swapped two dishes of the old menu, and we introduced two dishes new, right, from the new menu. And now we're on the, on the third day. So by Monday, Caviar and Bull will have the new menu, you know. And I, have the, I had the jury, who's the executive chef of Budapest, of Uncensored, and also Caviar and Bull, that he came over here to help us, uh, to help us uh, obviously, because to change a menu, it's quite... Uh, when you change a menu, it's very, it, for you, you look at it and you say, yeah, it's a menu, you know. But the work that goes into changing that menu and, and actually going live with the menu, you know, it's like crazy. <laughs> so you, you planted your first flag with a, a restaurant in Hungary. Uh, but recently you also planted another flag with, uh, with a winery. Yeah, well, th this is the third flag over there because the second flag is Uncensored, which is another restaurant. And now I bought a small vineyard. Um, in Budapest, and uh, 
I have uh, I have met some amazing people over there, some amazing winemakers that are making my uh, my wine as well. So yeah, you're going to see it tonight. It tastes, that's, tastes amazing. That's Great why we're, that's why we're drinking Don Gauchi. Yeah, that's right, Don Gauchi. You, you know it. Don Gauchi. I named it Don Gauchi for my grandfather, not for me. You know. Okay, I think most people would think they you named it after yourself. No, that's, that's good to, no, good to, good to no, clarify. No, yeah. no, no, no. Why why is uh, why Don Gauchi for your grandfather? Ah, because he he was a uh, you know he was uh, a boss you know the family boss not uh, nothing to do with, uh, <laughs> with the original <laughs> yeah yeah no no he was a uh, so somebody everybody would go to for advice kind of thing or you know what um, uh, we lost him uh, when he was quite young you know what I mean I remember um, uh, when I was young that uh, he got sick and then you know so there's. I remember every time that I was in his presence, he also always was a gentleman. He always cared, you know what I mean? He always helped. So obviously, I named him for him, you know? Yep, cheers to his memory. Thanks, man. It's quite fruit, you know? Yeah, it's really tasty. I'm looking forward to, to this in, over the summer. Uh, it'll be nice, that'll be nice. A beautiful Sauvignon Blanc that... Um, it's um, the winery is uh, very close to Budapest, so it's um, the first, the, the closest wine region of Hungary. To, Am I right to, to say a bit herbaceous? Yes, for sure, for sure. But even the scenery in 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 the area, it's called Etiak. Um, it's like Tuscany. Beautiful. I think people uh, don't really think outside of the tr- of the traditional wine areas, but you definitely have, and I think that's that's uh, it's, it's quite important, quite an important thing to do. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Hungary is quite known for uh, for its uh, Tokai wine. You know what I mean? And uh, they have some beautiful wine. Eh? The last uh, I, I say the last six years, the wine in Hungary has drastically improved, and uh, it was all like I I remember like. Uh, even 15 years ago, drinking Hungarian wine, you know? Not in Hungary, in Malta, or in uh, wherever I am around the world, you know? But when I went to Hungary, and I started, obviously, in my restaurant, most of the wine is Hungarian, you know? We have, I don't know, 80% of the wine is Hungarian. And uh, when you get to meet the wine producers, the winemakers, and 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 what they're doing, how they're doing it, you start saying, like, you know, they really know what they're doing, you know? And uh, I've tasted some amazing red wine as well. Um, uh, the Furmint uh, and the Sauvignon, uh, the, the Sauvignon Blanc is not uh, origin from uh, from there, but uh, the, it's uh, there's a bit of Furmint, Furmint in it, is which that, is the is Hung- local Hungarian, grape? Yeah, okay. yeah, Hungarian grape. It's very nice. Next time when we go to Budapest. When we go to Budapest. Uh, no, <laughs> no, 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 very soon. Very soon. Very yeah. soon. Very soon. Well, we have to am go. I, am I coming? Uh, you and me are going, man. Ah, that's the news. <laughs> you, you and me are coming. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. Okay. I look forward to that. That would be fun. Where is this available? Is it just in your restaurant? Just in your restaurant. Yeah, it's, uh, you have to eat at Budaman or Kaviran Bull. Budaman uh, finished now because it was uh, destroyed, no? That's, uh, yeah, now that was we, on yeah, top yeah, yeah. With, with, the, with the storm. It was destroyed with the storm, yeah. but now it's Osurus. Huh? Osurus. Mm. You know what Osurus means? Did I tell you last it time? Sounds like something from uh, Greek mythology. But... Yeah, it's kind of Latin, yeah? But it means the whisper of the sea. Beautiful. I love it. So, you've done quite a few different things. Your dishes are always quite unique. Do you consider yourself as a creative person? Of course, I'm a creative person. I mean, but it's not only food. I, 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 I try to create anything, you know what I mean? It's like I've, I've been always like this since I was young, you know? And how so, do you how do you get to that you know creative state or where, where do your ideas come from? It is I have no idea. It just you know when you're creative, your hands want to do something. You know what I mean, and then your your brain needs to work. <laughs> Some people have described it as uh, a train coming and just hitting you, and th- there's the realization. Is it? No, n- I never got hit by a train, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we wouldn't want that. Nobody would want that. What about things like uh, working too hard and experiencing burnout? You know, have you have you ever felt like you're overworked and you need the break? But no, man, I never worked. You never worked. No. How have you never worked? Because I never worked. Yeah, I do what I love, so I don't work. 
So it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel no, like no. work when when things are just getting very busy and you know it's it no, it's my lifestyle. You know what I mean? The the more hectic it is, the more problems I need to solve. The more happy I am. <laughs> That's great. That's great. You like challenging yourself. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not only challenging yourself, but um, you know, there's nothing more <sighs> beautiful than seeing something wrong and fixing it. I think that. Uh, there's nothing more that gives me pleasure when I see something dirty and cleaning it. You know what I mean? Or something that is broken and fix it. Or something that needs improving and you improve it. I think the satisfaction I get from that, it's, um, it's uh, unique. You also spoke about attitude and how that's very important to, to who you work with and who you don't work with, who yeah. you, who you, who's in your team. Uh, you also give a lot of importance to your team. Of course. And uh, I was just wondering what, what kind of uh, culture do you develop with your team? How do you, how do you, you know, create that vibe that you have going on? Well, it's, it's, uh, a, it's, it's a very good question, actually, because uh, it's uh, possibly um, uh, one of the hardest things you can do if you don't find uh, people that uh, understand where you're going why you're doing what you're doing and how you're doing it. And uh, I believe that um, if you have the right people around you, it's the easiest thing in the world, you know, because they understand you immediately and that's it, you know. But it's, um, it's quite tough to find people that understand your vision and understand and, and, and follow you and... and, 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 and Allow you, allow themselves to be guided. You know what I mean. It's very hard. In terms of vision, you've obviously done a lot of new things, even recently. But is there anything you haven't done yet, or you want to do, or you're thinking about? I'm always thinking. You know, if I had to start telling you what uh, what I might do, I won't stop. You know, but uh, I think right now, consolidating in what we have and making it better. It's, uh, it's, it's the goal, you know, so that's our goal. We have another few months like this, and then we'll see from there. Of course, I want to, I want to always do something new, you know what I mean? Like, for example, the winery, and now we're um, trying to organize also produce um, with my brand. So we get our own salt, and we get our own olive oil, and we get our own, you know, um, we make our own jams and our own you know, artisan products, label them, sell them from the restaurants and those online, you know. So these are all things that that are that are in the pipeline. But other than that, I think um, I've done, I mean, I've also done real estate and... You've done real estate? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I had uh, three different... Uh, four different projects, real estate projects, you know, even more. Oh, okay, so it was like construction kind of thing. Construction, yeah. So, I mean, it was like, because I didn't have enough work to do, <laughs> I said, oh, let me buy this land and build it and let me buy this and construct it and, you know. So, so I You're obviously very entrepreneurial. Do you think there's a, a difference between a, a good chef and a good business, restaurant owner? Absolutely, absolutely. There's a, there's a lot of amazing chefs. But uh, um, not uh, very few of them are entrepreneurial, you know. Has there ever been some uh, mistakes you made in the kitchen or uh, with with terms of a business? All the time, mistakes, fuck ups, all the time, you know. <laughs> uh, but you learn from them and you 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 try and uh, you know get out of them better. You know what I mean? Are you a good listener? I don't think I was, but now I am. How like I, I always had the, I knew where I wanted to go and I didn't care about anything else and go there, you know. Now it's a different story. I grew, I'm, again, I'm over 40 now, you know. So when you see someone with energy, with passion and with love, you, you stop and you listen to them, you know what I mean? And you understand what, where they're coming from, how they're coming uh, in that way and why they want to do that things, you know. Yeah, so I think the last, I say the last eight years, of becoming more of a good listener to, to people with suggestions, you know. Apart from that, since I started, I always listen to my guests. 
And if they said something that obviously, because I, I used to go out all the time to the, to the people, to, to, to my guests to understand whether they liked it or not, or this or that, then most of the people would tell you their feedback, you know what I mean? So they would say, yeah, this one was tough, or this one was this, or that one was that. So then you start understanding. You can't, you know, taste all the food the whole time, you know what I mean? So, okay, you taste the sauce, but you can, if you have a piece of steak, you cannot cut a piece of steak and eat it, you know? You, you need to know that the quality is good, you know? And you buy it from the go good sources, you know? But, uh, but if, for example, someone, imagine I served you a steak and it was a bit tough. So, so then I would go and cook one from the same loin. I would go and cook one and I understand whether it is or not. And if it was, I just use it for something else and not serve, you know? So I won't have... So yeah, I, I've always listened to my to my clients. You have to get that to the the feedback from yeah, the, from feedback, the customer. Yeah, feedback. That's the word. Yeah, yeah. that's the word. And uh, if you had, if you had a question that you think I should ask you, what would that be? Jesus. <laughs> that's if hmm. I know. It's just one one to think about. Hmm. You need to let me think for this. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. What? Uh, I mean, did you ask this question to everyone? No, just you. <laughs> Why you want an answer like that for me? <laughs> the question that I wish that you asked. Yes. Are you going to bring Uncensored to Malta? Uncensored? Yes. What's, tell me, what's Uncensored? So Uncensored is, um, uh, is a 360 degrees projected restaurant. So it's a room like this, a little bit bigger. There's uh, 15 tables, 12 tables, 12 tables. Um, and uh, we take you through a journey, uh, a chef's journey, from one country to the other every 25 minutes, right? So we take you there with the food, with the drink, with the visual, with the audio, with the culture, and with, me, with the atmosphere. It's mind-blowing. We take you uh, through, a, through a kind of exp ex experience, um, different countries, all mapped uh, around you you feel like immersed you know it's a uh, it's an amazing concept there's, there's in a lot a lot of technology involved in that you think technology has a big part to play in, in absolutely so technology was 80 percent now it's 50 because our kitchen is really really that? good well at first i uh -huh. said okay this restaurant is going to be 80 percent about the visuals and the the audio and the atmosphere and this and that but then the the Jury, my chef uh, in in Budapest, he created a menu that's mind mind blowing. So now people say, you know what? It was fifty percent the food and fifty percent the the experience. Okay, so you're saying the quality of the food, the taste, you know, the flavor is that another level that makes you forget about the technology, but not forget, no. but it it helps the um, it's it's a whole immersing uh, experience, you know. It's a uh, it's uh, a speakeasy restaurant, so. Um, there's a couple of entrances, but they're all speakeasy. One of them is from a, from a, an alley around the hot, uh, in the back of the hotel. The other one is through the wardrobe of Caviar and Bull. That from the wardrobe you go into a wine cellar. From the wine cellar you go into the restaurant, and the other one is from an atrium. So they're all speakeasy. You don't know that there's a door and there's a door. That's cool stuff. That's yeah, very, very, cool, very stuff. cool stuff. Yeah, very cool stuff. It's, um, I think it's, uh, it's a unique experience, you know, it's something that you don't, uh, that you don't see, you know. All right. Okay. You no, know, it was, it's been really great speaking, to, speaking with you. The uh, pleasure was all mine. I really want, I'm really looking forward to, to meeting up again every time we meet this, this, this certain, uh, you know, you, you pass on an energy to other people and I'm sure that, I'm sure that's what the people in your team feel. I'm sure what other people feel too. Today you brought along, uh, Max with you. Mr. Max. Mr. Max. Young guy, 16 years old, helping you out with, with, with some of your social media and stuff. I, I love to see that kind of thing. You know, it's, it's, it's like you're, you're, you're also a mentor in some ways to a lot of people. Absolutely. And uh, who, who's better to do the social media than a 16-year-old, no? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> it's very true. Very, very true. So it's been really great meeting you. Thank you so much. And, um, you're welcome. Thank you all for listening. That's been uh, another episode of Fuck Ups and Success, this time with... Marvin Gauchi, I uh, hope to see you all at the, at the next one. Cheers. Cheers. Hey.
it's nice when you hear the wine going down neck from the there you go man that's for you wow فعال ناقصه صدى مش هذا موتيز بلاف صافي هاو بلوك عنده مشكله صح عنده مشكله صح نو هي كتير دوت فوق في الفريج نو يا فور سي وار عنده امم بس ايز ديفرنت اوف كورس توب نوت جو نايس 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 نايس